Hello! Today we are going to review an innovative product from Regal Company, the Regal DS1054Z Digital Oscilloscope. In the beginning, we would like to take a look into the history of Regal. Back in 2008, Regal, being a startup company at the time, released a product line of DS1000E series oscilloscopes. The price quality ratio was so good that the oscilloscopes had no competitors and quickly became popular, receiving numerous awards. In fact, the DS1052E became a consumer choice product. Then, six years later, Regal decided to reproduce their former success and released the DS1000Z series of oscilloscopes. Click on the link above to watch the review. During early production, the company released the models with a bandwidth of 70 MHz and 100 MHz, the price of which, therefore, was a bit higher than the price of the Regal 1052E. After a while, Regal decided to fill in this gap by producing the DS1054Z model. Actually, the company has created an internal competition between the models, because these oscilloscopes are sold in the same price range. The difference in the price is about 15%. Now, we are going to find out if the new DS1054Z oscilloscope is able to overtake the leading model, the DS1052E. Let's start our review with a size comparison. The dimensions are almost identical. However, the DS1054Z is slightly taller and wider, and at the same time is a little bit more shallow than the E-Series model. Also, we would like to point out that the 1000Z series model comes no longer equipped with an RS-232 port, but instead it houses a LAN terminal. Visually, it is obvious that one of the main advantages of the DS-1054Z is the four input channel ports, while the DS-1052E model has only two of them. As a matter of fact, in this price range, there are no other four channel oscilloscopes. This gives the DS-1054Z a unique advantage. The other obvious advantage is the inclusion of a wide screen. The DS1052E model comes with a 5.7 inch display with a resolution of 320 by 240. The DS1054Z model has a 7 inch LCD display and a resolution of 800 by 480. Also, you will notice that the menu select buttons were added to both sides of the screen, significantly improving the device's ergonomics. Now, let's turn the oscilloscopes on. The 1000E model boots up faster. During the initialization process, the 1000Z model displays the remaining time for additional options operation. Well, the oscilloscopes are on. The first thing that sticks out is the difference between the LCD dimensions. The 1000Z model has a significantly larger and clearer LCD. In addition, as you can see, the automated measurement menu is available right upon boot up. While in the E-Series, in order to select this menu, you have to press the measure button, select the source, and choose the parameter type you want to measure. In this model, all these parameters are shown on startup. You can still select this menu by pressing the measure button, however, they are also available here. Okay, now let's see how it works. We are taking the signal and measuring its frequency and amplitude. The frequency is 100 kHz and the amplitude is 10 volts. It is likely that the period parameter was selected previously and now it is being shown on the LCD. These are the first things you notice. Now I'm going to show you all the other measurements. Let's talk about ergonomics. If you have previous experience working with E-Series oscilloscopes, working with a Z-Series model, you won't really face any problems, because all of the controls pretty much remain at the same places, such as the time-based control, the startup control, the same six control buttons for the menu, and the same multifunctional encoder. Everything is at the same place. Now, let's talk about the basic advantages and differences. First of all, the Z-Series model is provided with more advanced mathematical firmware. Let's select the E-Series mathematical menu. Here, we have only four mathematical operators available, Add, Subtract, Multiply, and Fast Fourier Transform. 
while in this model there are more than 10 of them. We have the same ones as the E-series model, plus logic operators, integration, differentiation, square root, logarithms, exponent, and modulus. Let's take the signal modulus and turn the device on. As we can see, the purple line displays the result of the mathematical operation. Also, the Z-series oscilloscopes have some functions unavailable in E-series oscilloscopes, such as a digital protocols decoder for both parallel and serial RS-232, I2C, and SPI. These functions are available in demo mode, and for the first 36 hours of work, they are free of charge. However, then, if the user wants to continue working with these functions, he has to buy the license code. Also, the 1000Z model has more trigger options. For example, select the trigger menu of the 1000E series oscilloscope, and you will see that there are only five types of trigger method options, while the same menu of the 1000Z provides a lot more. No comment there. There is a signal trigger option, but the oscilloscope also may be launched by flat cable signals of RS-232, I2C, and SPI. In addition to all this, the Z-series oscilloscopes have another advantage over the 1000E series. This is the huge memory capacity of 12 megabytes, unlike the 1 megabyte of the 1000E series, and the high-speed data capture rate of up to 3000 waveforms per second. Now I will show this difference practically. For example, let's start with the Regal DS1052E. I'm providing a signal to the input. It'll be a square waveform with a time base of 1 microsecond. Let's change the time base to the level of 1 millisecond. 1000 times more. Pressing the Run Stop button, the signal is stored in the memory. Now we are trying to expand it a thousand times to have a closer look at the signal. As you can see, the signal looks almost nothing like a square waveform due to significant distortions. And now, I'm going to perform the same operation with the Regal 1000Z model. Setting the same time base of 1 microsecond, let's modify it 1000 times to the 1 millisecond level. Expanding the chart. After expanding the chart, you can see that the square waveform stays the same, no distortions. That is the primary advantage of the 1000Z series oscilloscopes, a capability of capturing big data volumes without distortions. And now, let's try doing the same operation with a signal with a more interesting shape. Here we have a signal. The time base of the signal is 500 nanoseconds. I'm saving this signal as the reference signal for further comparison. Let's change the time base 1000 times to 500 microseconds. Here we go. I've just pressed the stop button and expanded the signal to 500 nanoseconds. At first the signal looks unchanged. Let's compare it to the reference signal. As you can see, the signals are identical. No differences can be visually detected. Then let's change the time base 10,000 times. I turn off the reference signal. Let's go to 5 milliseconds. Now I expand the chart. The signal remains the same. Indeed, the signal, in fact, corresponds to the reference signal. Let's torture the device for one last time. I will change the time base 100,000 times to 50 milliseconds. The signal has been stored to the memory, so I'm expanding it.
As we can see, there is a slight angularity and distortions at the peak values. Showing the reference signal now. Obviously, the signal is practically the same. In other words, large data storage capacity and high-speed data capture provides the D1000Z series with the capability of analyzing large volumes of data. That means I have received a large volume of data magnified at 10,000 times and did not lose signal accuracy. The E-series oscilloscopes are not able to operate like that. Well, there you have it. The DS1054Z oscilloscope blows completely past the DS1052E in the same price range. Let me remind you of the major advantages. First of all, four input channels versus two, 12 megabytes of memory against one megabyte, high-speed data capture of up to 30,000 waveforms per second, significantly more trigger options, and an option for the installation of a digital signals decoder. I hope this video will help you make the right choice when buying an oscilloscope.